Hi everyone, welcome back to lesson two of my free SAT math course. In this video, we are in heart of algebra and covering word problems. We're gonna go through four different word problems and I'm gonna give you overall strategies you can use to attack those word problems. Before we get into the first problem here, let's talk overall strategy. Every word problem, the goal is to make an equation or equations and then solve those equations. And step one of doing that is identifying your variables. So let's read this question and see if we can identify the variables or the things we're looking for. A food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day was $836.50. How many salads were sold that day? So we're dealing with drinks and we're dealing with salads. So let's write down those variables. We're going to say D equals number drinks and S equals number of salads. And so now we have two variables and a rule of thumb with equations is that you need the same number of equations as a variable to find those variables. So meaning if you have one variable, you only need one equation to solve it. If you have two, like in this problem, we need two equations to solve those variables. So we need to write two equations in this problem. And with word problems, there tends to be some themes with the equations you write, and there's two main types. Equation one, this will usually be the amount equation or the quantity equation. So in this problem, we'll find an equation for the number of drinks and the number of salads. Then the second equation will be some kind of measurement. So it could be price, it could be weight, it could be any measurement. So when you see word problems, first, identify the variables. Two, remember the types of equations you need, usually an amount one and then some kind of measurement. And then we can start constructing these. So let's get into the problem a little more. Let's start with the amount equation. So how many drinks and sodas do we have in total? So drinks plus sodas equals, and what do we see? The food trucks revenue from selling a total of 209 salads. So 209 salads and drinks, so D plus S equals 209. That's the amount equation. This one is usually trickier to find, so it helps to get this right off the bat. Now the next one, we're talking about price, so this is gonna be a price one. Salads are 650 each, so we're gonna do 6.5 S plus drinks are $2 each, 2 D, and the total price was $836.50. Okay, 836.5. So now we have our two equations and we can start solving them. With word problems, the hardest part is usually just writing the equations. With these two equations, we need to isolate one of the variables and have S equal something or D equal something so we can plug it into this main one. So let's work with this one. Uh, the D looks a little easier because it's attached to a two. So I'm gonna convert the D into an S. And I'm gonna do that with this equation, subtract S from both sides. And this equation becomes D equals 209 minus S, S. And so over here, we can see we have an S and a D, and we can just plug this in there. So it would be 6.5 S plus two times, instead of D, it's gonna be what D equals 209 minus S. And that's gonna equal 836. And now we can solve the problem. So we'll have 6.5s plus, we'll distribute the 2. We get 418 minus 2s equals 836.5. Combine the s's, 6.5s minus 2s, we got 4.5s plus 418 equals 836.5. And let's take it over here to give me some room. So again, 4.5s plus 418 equals 836.5. Subtract the 418 from both sides. So that's going to be 4.5s equals, let's see, 836.5 minus 418. So 418.5. Divide both sides by 4.5, divide by 4.5, and 418.5 divided by 4.5, did the math earlier, is 93. So we get 93 salads were sold that day. 
So going back, step one, identify the variables. Step two, write the two equations of the amount and the measurement. And then step three is solve. Let's look at another word problem. First thing we're gonna do here is read through the problem. At a lunch stand, each hamburger has 50 more calories than an order of fries. If two hamburgers and three orders of fries have a total of 1,700 calories, how many calories does a hamburger have? Variables here are the calories in hamburgers and the calories in fries. So let's do H equals calories hamburgers and then F equals calorie fries. All right, so let's do the total amount first. So it says two hamburgers and three order of fries have 1700 calories. So 2H plus 3F equals 1700. And now this one is a little different. It's saying each hamburger has 50 more calories than an order of fries. So the third type of equation you might find is a comparison. And what you wanna do for these is first set them equals. So we're gonna say H equals F. We know that's not true. It says each hamburger has 50 more calories than order of fries. So because this is 50 more, to make them equal, we'll give the fries 50 more. And now we know what H is, and we can plug it into this equation. So we get two instead of H, it's gonna be F plus 30, or 50, I'm sorry, plus three F equals 1700. So we'll get 2f plus 100 equals 3f, I'm sorry, plus 3f equals 1700. Combine the f's, we get 5f plus 100 equals 1700. Subtract 100 from both sides. We get 5f equals 1600. Let's bring it over here by both sides by 5. We get F equals 1600 divided by 5, 0, 3, okay, the 1, 2, and then 0. So we know F equals 320 calories, but it's asking for calories of a hamburger. So let's use our other equation to get the calories for the hamburger. So H equals 320 plus 50. So H equals 370. So same kind of cadence for this problem. You first write the variables. Step two is you write the equations. In this one we saw a third type of equation which is the comparison where you set them equal even though you know they're not equal and then you balance it according to the problem. Step three, solve. Let's look at another problem. This one is a word problem but it really just gives you the information and you have to fill it in. So a good first step for all these problems is reading through the whole thing. Oh, let's read it. At Lincoln High School, approximately 7% of enrolled juniors and 5% of enrolled seniors were inducted to the National Honor Society last year. So it's starting to sound like one of those other ones we've been doing. Let's keep reading. If there were 562 juniors and 602 seniors enrolled in the high school last year, which of the following is the closest to the total number of juniors and seniors at Lincoln High School who were inducted into the National Honor Society? So here we're not solving equations, we're kind of just doing calculations, but we do need to write our equation for it. So we have juniors and seniors. They say 7% of the juniors were in the Honor Society, so it's 0.07, and there were 562 juniors, so times 562. And then 5% of the seniors, so plus 0.05, and there were 602 of them. And that's gonna equal our answer, the total amount in the National Honor Society. So here we're just gonna do the calculations. 562 times 0 0.07, 39.34, to 602 times 0 0.05, 30. Then we go back to, so it's gonna be 39 plus 30, because we're approximating, which is 69. And that is our answer. So this one, a little more straightforward. We wrote one equation, they gave us everything in it, and we were just simplifying it. Now let's look at the last problem, which might be the trickiest and the one that gives you the most trouble. So this one here, you can already see from the answer choices, it's not asking you to solve equation, it's trying to ask you to write it and kind of write it in terms of something. So the trick here is to write a whole equation with two variables and then solve it in terms of the other. So let's read the question. 
Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount off its original price. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, including 8% sales tax on the disc tax on the discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? She had an original price, it was discounted, she paid a tax, and that was her new price. And here, if you look at the problems, you're like, oh, it's a one um, variable problem. But in this case, you want to make your own. So if you ever see a problem where it has, you know, write something in terms of a variable, make another variable. Because all of these, they're kind of abstract, difficult to understand. But if you had something like overall price equals this, overall price equals this, overall price equals that, that's more easy to work with, easier to work. So because we have O for overall price, O is gonna be overall price. And then P is going to be final price. So let's start with the overall price and turn it into the new one. So she got a 20% discount, which means she's paying 80% of the full price. So it's gonna be 0.8 times the overall price. And then she paid an 8% sales tax. So 8% more. So times 1.08. And that's gonna be P. So we want O in terms of P. So we're just gonna get O by itself. So it's gonna be O equals, and then one of these. So I'll divide by 0.8 first, do both sides. So we have O, sorry, 1.08 times O equals P over 0.8. And divide by 1.08, both sides. We get O equals P over 0.8 times 1.08. And that's one of the answers. That's this one here. So I hope you saw a couple of different word problems, learned how to solve them. Always want to identify the variables, know the types of equations you're going to run into. And if you get to one of these weird ones where you're writing something in terms of something, add another variable and solve for that.